What's up everybody? In this issue of Platinum Tech, we are talking about mechanical fuel pumps. Now we all know that the fuel system determines the power potential of your car and with a thousand horsepower becoming pretty normal in street cars and a lot of drag cars making two, three, four thousand horsepower, keeping up with fuel demands has gotten more difficult and more costly. Now you can go for one big fuel pump to try and keep up with your power demands but the problem is if it fails, you're out. They're also quite expensive and the other problem is when you're cruising, all that extra fuel means the fuel is going to get quite hot or you can go for a whole bunch of external fuel pumps and stage them, but the problem with that is they're very noisy, they put a huge strain on the voltage system at full noise, and of course, there's a reliability issue as well. Now, what if I told you there was a way to have a fuel pump that could meet whatever fuel demand you wanted, didn't have any noise, and didn't put any strain on the voltage system whatsoever, and is way more reliable? Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, the answer is a mechanical fuel pump. Now tuners and modifiers have steered clear of mechanical fuel pumps in the tuning industry more than anything because they just think, well, mechanical fuel pumps, they're for drag cars and they don't start very well. Well, the truth of the matter is that most forms of motorsport have been using mechanical fuel pumps, well, for the entire 20th and 21st century. Uh, why? Well, for the exact reasons we said. They're more reliable and they don't put any strain on the voltage system. In fact, the Winfield GTR used a mechanical fuel pump back in the early 90s. Now we think mechanical fuel pumps are the next big thing in the tuning industry and so does Herman from Platinum Racing Products. So we caught up with him about how they work, why and how he's putting them into practice. Mechanical fuel pumps have been around in race cars for decades. The only reason I think we're starting to see a lot more of it now is because we're going past the seven, eight hundred thousand horsepower mark and we're getting into the 13 to 1500 horsepower seems to be the benchmark. To sort of support that kind of power, you're talking four, five, six oh four fours. It's getting really complicated with wiring. The alternator system doesn't cut it, so you're upgrading an alternator system. Still can't probably turn your headlights on at the same time. Uh, and it's a lot of work and it gets expensive. Mechanical fuel pumps are very primitive. They're old fashioned, but they work. I think that people have the misconception that drag cars and mechanical fuel pumps are hard to start mainly because drag cars are just hard to start. You know, fuels, and I remember cold starting fuel um, tunes years ago was really hard when ethanol came along. Technology's come so far with ECUs, cold starts are not a problem, people know how to tune them, and mechanical fuel pump, yeah sure, if you've got air in the system somewhere, uh, they can be hard to start, it's got a prime, but the way you should set it up with lift pump in the back of the car, pressurising a surge tank, you've got fuel at the pump anyway, if it's sucking air from somewhere, it's probably a leak and you'll find out about it pretty quickly. Um, we've done, you know, a few setups now and much to my surprise, not even a couple of cranks of the engine, it's, it's running. So it's no worse than, than before and I think we've effectively debunked that myth. The advantages of a mechanical fuel pump setup is firstly, simplicity. You don't have to have multiple pumps. Having multiple pumps, you don't actually know if one pump stops working or stops working effectively. There's no noise with the mechanical fuel pump system. There's no belt or mechanical connection that can fail with a cam-driven system, obviously being driven directly off the camshaft. There is no point of failure, but you're removing all the electronic component. So it doesn't matter if your alternator dies or, or your battery voltage becomes an issue. Um, your ECU's gonna get preferred voltage to keep your coil packs and everything running and your injectors, and the mechanical drive pump, uh, it's basically got a 1 8 drive hex and it's spinning two pump gear pumps. Mechanical fuel pump system becomes really simple. Basically, instead of having your normal surge at the back of the car and your lift pump to surge, and then you're running wiring relays and all the rest of it, you're getting it to the front of the car. Lift pump in the tank, which can be the original, 
and then you just push a dash six line or whatever you want to run up to the front of the to the surge tank in the engine bay. We prefer to have it in the engine bay so you don't have, and here's another misconception, it'll work fine out of the back, but these sorts of pumps don't like scavenging. They're not a sucking type pump. They're a fuel delivery pump, high pressure at the outlet. So you don't want to make that pump work and cavitate fuel. You want the fuel to be at the pump. So instead of having, for example, a surge tank in the back with a dash 12 line and three litres of fuel that was going to want to pull apart and cavitate when you're taking off down the runway at you know, eight second quarter mile, you have a surge tank uh, recommended in the engine bay somewhere and you, you can have your standard dash six line up to the surge or your, your standard, the OEM fuel line and then you have your dash 12 or your dash 10 into your pump. It's already at the engine bay. Fuel pump doesn't have to work to pull the fuel. It's right there and available. And you push it into your, your fuel system, your fuel rails, and then you've got your return, your, obviously your return back to surge, your fuel pressure regulator, all, none of that system changes. And you have no electronic component. It's, it's simple, other than the lift pump, of course. GDRs are predominantly renowned for needing a larger alternator when you're starting to go multiple pumps. Dead batteries all the time because you're running such a big fuel system, you're having to upgrade alternators, you're having to let the car sit there and idle just to build the battery back up again. With a mechanical system, you're just bypassing all of that. There's no issue. The car just starts and, and, and runs. It's got plenty of power. You're not drawing on the system and overloading it, trying to make it do things it doesn't want to do. I'm not really seeing any disadvantages in running a mechanical fuel system. You can run it on the street. It may be defectable, but that's not my problem. My problem is getting people a reliable fuel system and a streetable option if they want, and it works on the street. I don't see a disadvantage at all. We choose to sell one of the dearest pumps on the market. We do like Kinsler because there is so many options, and I'd prefer to spec a pump according to what the car actually is going to use. Um, Kinsler has got the whole range, the largest range in the industry, and it is known as the best quality pump on the market, which is why Platinum wants to associate itself with Kinsler. Starting at the bottom of the Kinsler range, we stock the 500 all the way up to the 1300. Now, to give you an idea of what those part numbers actually mean, or the series means, it's the size of the gear in Imperial uh, measurements. So a 500 is half an inch. The 1300 is 1 1.3 inch thickness gear. So the 500, for example, flows from memory 4.7 gallons uh, uh, a minute at 4,000 RPM, which is half your yeah, 8,000 RPM engine speed because your cam's spinning half the speed, obviously. Now that little pump at 4.7, for example, that'll flow quite easily, 1,000 horsepower. So, you know, you want to over-spec your pump maybe by 30%. So, you know, the small pump that Kinsler offer, that we offer, because uh, the Kinsler pumps actually go down to the 200, I believe, but we started off at 700 horsepower, 800 horsepower at the wheels. We recommend the 500 series pump, and then you can go all the way up to 3,000 horsepower on methanol with the 1300 series pump, which is absolute overkill. People want overkill, they want to go bigger is better, that, that's all good, but all the flow rates and everything are available on our website. And uh, if you spend a bit of time, you'll realise that some of the medium-sized pumps is more than what you'll need to accomplish 2,000 horsepower. You're probably all familiar with our standard uh, trigger kit. You've got your, your, your standard bit down the bottom. That stays the same. The single cast bracket, which many of you have already bought, you're probably all familiar with it, and the top trigger kit. So now the cast bracket stays. You can reuse the old cast bracket. That hasn't changed. You remove the top trigger mount and, and the... And the trigger behind it and you install basically this fuel pump adapter with the drive. Now, let me talk about the fuel pump adapter. We have a sensor here that comes in on an angle. There's one set up already. So you have a trigger kit incorporated in the fuel pump housing. So you can run the trigger on the single cast bracket or you can split them up like I've got on this engine and have the separate trigger and the fuel pump if you wanted to run the fuel pump on the inlet cam or swap them around or whatever you've got options. Then you have the drive which has basically got very lightweight aluminium spider gear with a rubber uni, offers dampening, it takes the vibration out of the system. You've got a magnet in the tip of this counterbalanced piece that sits onto the camshaft. The sensor reads off that magnet every time it swings past it. So it's all very simple, single cast, 
that works. There's no need for the double cast. It was only ever intended for uh, a trigger when we hadn't worked out how to incorporate the trigger into the fuel pump system. After posting a couple of photos, people loved the, the love heart, so we ended up making it anyway. Uh, it's not a requirement, but it's an option, and we like to give options at PRP.